Man, they didn't even give us a full visual of the Trojan. I came from uptown, way uptown. I came from uptown, way uptown. I came from uptown, way. Yeah. So, Project Gemini was jam packed with interesting but confusing sci fi concepts and unexpected twists. The sphere and the monster it created, dubbed the Trojan were the hardest things to wrap your mind around. Project Gemini is a deep space expedition developed by scientists to create a new Earth using alien technology on a distant planet after a deadly plant virus destroyed the Earth's ecosystem and caused people diseases. The project was centered around two ancient alien objects that paleontologists estimated to be over 4 billion years old before any life on Earth. One is the sphere which they believe created all life on Earth including humans. It uses chemical elements from the environment like hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen to create the miracle of life and the conditions people need to survive. The other is a warp engine that allows spaceships to jump to far away solar systems. Scientists recreated the ancient sphere and warp engine and found out they could control the devices with commands that correspond to a certain pattern. They planned on using the sphere to create a new Earth on a planet they found in a solar system several hundreds of light years away called Tess. The team of military pilots and scientists sent on the mission to save humanity were led by the film's main character, a scientist named Stephen Ross. Stephen knew the sphere could create different life forms and once the spaceship left the earth, the sphere began to create the deadly monster known as the Trojan. They called it a Trojan as a reference to the Trojan horse because it infiltrated their ship by hiding in the sphere. It's a bio-robot, which is a living creature created by artificial means. I wasn't the biggest fan of its squid-like design. It kind of reminded me of the Sentinel machines in the Matrix films, except the Trojan was a lot more ugly. It was basically a creepy glowing metal mask with black robotic tentacles hanging out of it. I'm pretty sure it had feet, but the visuals of whenever it made brief appearances were so dark, I couldn't get a clean look at it. It was created by the sphere and made from the same materials as the sphere, which means that one of the sphere's functions was to create a Trojan. The Trojan had black robotic tentacles that were constantly leaking slime and it could move fast and stealthy. Its tentacles were strong enough to pierce through humans and it transmitted an EMP field that allowed it to manipulate and malfunction nearby electronics. Strikes from its slime-covered tentacles can infect living creatures with an aggressive bacteria found within the slime. When a person becomes infected, the bacteria spreads throughout the person's body, causing them to mutate. 
it eventually spreads to the brain where it takes over and confuses the host. The person then becomes mentally ill enough to take actions that are in the best interests of the Trojan. But the Trojan must have trust issues or some cause it eliminates everyone it comes across even if they're infected. Water changed its state to emit fluorescent lights and each one of its tentacles is a transponder that connects to the sphere to relay info back to it. The Trojan is an intelligent life form that conquers planets with the help of the sphere. And that's why it was sent to the Earth. They never explain where the sphere came from, but Steven said that a civilization must have sent the sphere to the Earth to create a biosphere for them to live, but something went wrong. The malfunction must have led to the creation of life that led to human evolution. Somehow, the sphere created people by accident. The Trojan tried to correct the sphere's error by going back in time before there was any life on Earth to reprogram it properly so humans would never be created. They never clarify whether the Trojan is an alien or a creation of aliens. But since the bacteria within its slime held the key to finding a vaccine for the plant virus that was destroying the earth, it's possible that the sphere created the virus to destroy all life on earth and make the environment perfect for the aliens. Security footage from the ship showed that right before the crew engaged the warp engine for a jump, the Trojan crawled out of the sphere and attacked the engine. It must have reprogrammed the engine's destination and that's why the crew woke up from the jump lost in an unfamiliar solar system. Initially, Steven thought the pilot entered the wrong coordinates. Then he decided to use the ship's lander to check out the nearest planet to them that coincidentally had the right conditions they were looking for to start a new Earth. And after a crash landing, the crew took the sphere to a cave that looked extremely familiar because it's the same location as the cave on Earth. The Trojan followed the crew to the cave and each time Steven set the sphere with his commands, the Trojan would reprogram the sphere to create the environment and life forms it needed. The Trojan attacked the crew at the lander because they were interfering with its plans to take over the Earth. The crew eventually figured out that the planet that was nearest to them that they took the sphere to was the Earth 4 billion years back in time by tracking the movement trajectories of nearby stars and planets and calculating how they would look 4 billion years in the future by using some next level technology that they had. Steven also realized that the bracelet he made for his girl Ali was made from the same fragment of the sphere that his crew member David shot off while he was reprogramming it. The sphere they had and the sphere on Earth was the same spheres, just in different times. Towards the end, after Steven set off the bomb in the lander that smote the Trojan, he headed back to the cave and placed the fragment back on the sphere with info he engraved about how to set the sphere for his girl Amy. Since the sphere remained in the cave until their time and eventually he made a bracelet out of the fragment, back in their time, the message instantly appeared on the bracelet. 
Amy entered the commands from the bracelet into the sphere on Earth, which allowed her and Stephen to virtually communicate. They say their goodbyes, and he gives her the info she needs to create a vaccine. At the end of the film, we see Amy surrounded by plants, and she's entertaining her child. She looks happy, so it's safe to say she successfully created the vaccine to the plant virus and they saved the world. Later, Stephen's voice is heard saying a prayer about the earth. His fate is unclear, but it's obvious he never made it back to his time. He got what he wanted though. He got to play God and create the earth with the sphere. The film's technology and story were cool but confusing if you ain't pay attention to what the characters were saying. To hear my full thoughts about the film, go check out my review. It's absolutely free for y'all to support the channel. Doesn't cost y'all a dime to hit that like and subscribe button. Moving forward, I'm only responding to subscriber comments. So lock in with me and hit that subscribe button. And I'ma get up with y'all on the next video, right? Holla at me. I came from Mucktown, way uptown. I came from Mucktown, way uptown. I came from Mucktown, way.